right, everybody. So um, last, what was it, a week ago or so, two weeks ago, Coach Ann, we did a back-to-school workshop with the music teachers, our Music Rhapsody team here in Southern California. We videoed uh, my presentation to them, just kind of our our own booster before we get back into the schools and back to our studio classes. We videoed that presentation for you and then we put it in a goodie pack so you had all PowerPoint slides. So if some of those slides are useful for you for your own classroom, um, you would have all of those. You would have the content and then the downloads and the um, documents that would have the ORF orchestrations, the chords. Um, there was a ukulele lesson in there for the the goodbye song that we're using this year. Uh, all the music and ideas from the early youngest of early childhood up through the oldest for um, elementary and middle school. What to do with that same hello song and how. Uh, just lots of information about that. And so there's a big goodie pack, big video PowerPoint presentation all sent. So if you did not get that, we are going to be referring to it a little bit this afternoon or quite a bit, actually. Um, you're always welcome to ask questions about it. But I have some new things, too, that, you know, wait, there's more. So here's a few more tips, but a lot of that will relate on um, just making things more successful, more musical, more smooth for your entire school year. Obviously, the goal is for us to love our jobs, and um, I don't think you would be coming and volunteering here to spend your time with me today if you weren't an incredibly motivated, dedicated teacher to be the best you can be. And I'm sure we all truly love what we do, but if we're doing it the exact same way, like for me, um, since 1978, <laughs> that's a lot of years. So you want to you want to have an ORF approach. So things change and they're different. So we would not want to do the same hello song and the same goodbye song for 40 years, or for me, 40. What is it? Three, uh, or how many? It's a lot. You want to have you want to have an an excitement for your school year. And even though I've done this hello song many, like maybe every five years, six years or whatever, um, I always look forward to it coming back. And it's the children that make it different because it is always going to be from an ORF approach where everyone is musical, everyone has a place, and it's our job to f make sure that that happens and from wherever they are that we raise the bar. So the hello, well, there we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your commitment. Um, and that's just more info. It'll come at the end. We'll talk about that. Why a hello song, why we love to have it all year long, the qualities of our hello song was all in that mini workshop that um, many of you have already seen and we've already gotten some wonderful questions and feedback about it. But if you haven't, I highly encourage you to do that because these songs are, are truly ones that even if you're using, like if you're new to Music Rhapsody, you might be using from the curriculum, the Tidy O, Hello, transition song all year long, and the Beethoven, Come My Friends. But these are good for you to just stick in your back pocket for next school year because you will be using the, you know, the curriculum, but you'll want th those new, new songs. Um, and these are just absolutely real keepers, this hello song. Every morning when I wake up, I have a new song to sing. Avon Gillespie, I hope you listen to this incredibly inspiring ORF teacher who I saw for the first time probably 19, I believe it was like 1980, maybe 81, at uh, ORF workshop. I was in the Arizona 
chapter at that time. Um, after teaching in Illinois, I moved to Arizona where the fourth chapter was super strong. And Avon Gillespie was absolutely amazing. And there's actually a recording of him teaching this song every morning. So um, we use that for so many, many different reasons during the school year. And it's it truly is a scaffolding that goes like this, that by the end of your year, all of this learning has taken place and you have yourself a fantastic concert piece. Um, but I just feel like even for myself, listening to Avon Gillespie present that at that workshop, that recording that I had um, included in the workshop, it just really um, will it make you even more excited about getting in with your kids. And I feel like I have a little bit of what you hear Avon has. <laughs> it's just truly inspiring. So, um, oh, yes, Bev Bullis. This is a great little, um, oh, Mary. I see who this is from. This is from Mary. Oh. Hello, Mary. She just commented about Bev Bullis, yes. And yeah, she used to open, um, she, she used to open our chapter workshops and I presented many times for the Orange County um, chapter and I remember waiting uh, before we would start. It was just the, the tradition to have Bev Bullis start with that every morning when I wake up. Fantastic. That's a great memory, Mary. Thank you. So if there's any questions at all about that that song, um, every morning when I wake up, have a new song to sing, oh children, every morning when I wake up, have a new song to sing, oh yeah, I kind of end that with, because we play on oh children, and again, you will have all the ORF parts, it's all in that, that goodie pack, and uh, any questions at all about the hello song, I, I've seen a whole bunch of you watch that mini workshop. So just chat uh, any kind of question you have about using that song. And the, those of you who haven't seen it yet, um, I think you will really get a lot of ideas how this is going to be so beneficial to you all year long. All right, well, I promised I was going to highlight my favorite book, and many of you know what it is, but it's always good to have a reminder, and it is Froggy. Froggy goes to school, and some of you who have been with me for so long know that I have Froggy goes to school, and then we have the winter version, Froggy gets dressed. And then we have our summer version, and that is the froggy learns to swim. And solo singing is a part of that, so I just have fun and copy the picture out of the book, laminate, put on a craft stick, and that's my little microphone whose turn it is to echo sing. And... Um, the mom is a music teacher, so Froggy grew up being very used to this. She never said his name. She would always sing Froggy or Froggy, Froggy, and he would have to go, what? However she sang it, he had to echo it. So for Froggy goes to school, the first thing you do when you get your plan and your the the very very detailed plan um, this is in music box downloads it's in uh, the curriculum with uh, rhythm readers and just a really for so many age groups it's just a fun one to start the school year with movement with singing with pitch matching with uh, very playfulness very you know, it's got a great little sense of humor in this book. So the first thing you do is you number your pages and it, it will say in the download, start with this page. This, this is the page one. And then it'll just say number every single page all the way, all the way to the end. There you have page 
27 looks like this and then it'll say every single page what I'm going to highlight what's going to be kind of the musical aspect or or what I what I kind of leave out so froggy after all this kind of silly stuff eating uh, you know well it starts right out with with uh, his nightmare and getting dressed so uh, he has rules even in his nightmare he's got things he has to remember about school so we keep the beat and we sing froggy froggy goes to school please get dressed now that's the rule and that's because he has a nightmare that he went to school and he was not dressed he had forgotten to get dressed so um <laughs> yeah so and you know when you're five or six or four or seven that is pretty crazy funny that he's going to go to school and forgot to get dressed <laughs> So lots of echo singing here with his mom, with his dad. Um, he's very, very nervous. And so the next little rule that comes up is froggy, froggy goes to school. I'm hand clapping with you guys. Are you clapping back with me? <laughs> Eat your breakfast. That's the rule. Oh, good. Yes. I, I couldn't do it with both hands because I was holding the book, but you, I hope you did. <laughs> uh-huh okay well for froggy goes to school the i mean obviously copyright you have to buy the book and i own the book and i own many copies of the book <laughs> because i i have them here in our resource center i have a copy my office at home has a copy but i feel like if you own the book if you made this little this little solo singing visual um, and you own the book, you should be fine. For PowerPoint, I would not have copyright to make all my all the visuals and and then and then give those away. okay? Legally, we're not supposed to be doing that. But when you have multiple, multiple huge <laughs> groups, classes, um, and you do have the capability of PowerPoint, taking a picture and having it that way, or I believe, uh, oh, what is that program? There's a program where you can buy the books and it'll have the visuals for your classes, especially during COVID. Many teachers use that. So you could check into that. I'm almost very certain that uh, you can you can get them in visuals through uh, the publisher try Amazon um, okay so then he's he's in his desk and he's thinking of his mother and he's singing they're doing the echoes uh, and then he he keeps reminiscing about his mother and all these details details will be in your lesson plan for highlighting every page but then he gets so loud that the teacher says froggy froggy sings what <laughs> and then she gives a new rule please stay quiet so now we sing again froggy froggy goes to school please stay quiet that's the rule And then everybody was, wait, let's see, this page I'm at where he gets distracted and she says, Froggy, pay attention. So that's another, please pay attention. That's the rule. And then just like our five little leaves, one of our favorite fall songs from in all kinds of weather in the curriculum, five little leaves comes back from the baby class all the way to the rhythm readers with the parachute extravaganza, with scarves, um, with with reading from left to right, so many things we have for that. Well, he's thinking of that. So the kids think that's pretty funny because they know that, familiar with that song. He's thinking of the five little leaves and how these leaves are twisting and turning and dancing. And it's so beautiful as they're twisting. And then 
plop, he falls right out of his chair. Oh no! And teacher says, Froggy, Froggy goes to school. Please stay seated. That's the rule. And then it's circle time when Miss Witherspoon asked, what did everybody do this summer? Everyone started shouting, me, me, ah, I want to, I, and starting sh to all say what they did over the summer. And Miss Witherspoon went, and they clapped it back. Yes, Miss Witherspoon had ORF training. Good echoes, Miss Witherspoon. All right, so anyway, we get all the way here to the end, and you'll have all the details when to bring in each new verse, each song. But the point for us is now we're learning the rules for our ORF instruments and going over reviewing the ORF instrument rules. So we'd go, froggy, froggy goes to school. Pinch and wrap, now that's the rule. Or um, what's another rule? Does somebody have another rule for your ORF instruments? Uh, walk around, don't step over. <laughs> yes, walk and we around. have that fun little chant. Walk around, cha cha cha. Walk around, cha cha cha. Don't step over. Uh, uh, uh. Walk around, cha cha cha. Yes. So, um, froggy, froggy goes to school. Walk around now. That's the rule. So we can introduce the rules through. Froggy going to the ORF room, and we, we can just kind of extend it that way. But I do reviews many, many, many lessons in a row before we go to the ORF instruments. And again, I never send the whole class at once, <gasps> right? You, to just see who thinks they could remember all those rules. There were so many. So it's just, again, a, a playful, humorous way to introduce the guidelines. And for those of you, and I know we have lots and lots of Music Rhapsody members with us today, and lots of you in, in the online, who just started online training or just finished that, but have, um, you know, are continuing on the membership. You always have that 100 page training manual. Okay, so it's 100 plus pages. The, all the rules that I use, the rules for ORF, using ORF instruments, all these guidelines that I set up for, you know, the, the what I call the young at the bars, their first experience going to the ORF instruments. Um, that's on page 13 in your book. I refer to that, I mean, it's just helpful to remember, oh yeah, I didn't, you know, play like butterflies, so their wrists come up. N this isn't the way we play, right? We pinch and wrap. Yeah, you don't see percussionists playing like that. So pinch and wrap, and then the butterfly wing comes up the wrist like a butterfly, not down like elephants. So they're they're all listed there for you. So just trying to make, you know, instead of, now I have some rules before we can play, you know, it's much better like, okay, Froggy was going to the ORF room, and this is what, you know, just... Silly, silly fun that they love. So um, classroom management is another one of the topic reminders. Um, it, it, certainly for our new teachers, this is the trickiest part. You know, you think you got your lessons down and then everything just seems to go to chaos in between, you know? Um, and you want to keep it musical. I find this even teaching with parents. They start talking to each other. You know, they're talking about going to Starbucks after the lesson and uh, where'd you get his little shoes? Those are so cute. And all of a sudden, the class, you've got to now polarize it back to getting into a musical place. So I try not to leave a musical place. I only get to see the class once a week. In our schools, we're here in Southern California, we either get to see them zero times a week, one time a week. We even have some schools that want to do every other week. Is that sad or what? So we want to make the best of that little 
that little time that we have with them. Hopefully you have at least 45 minutes. It's even hard if you only have a half hour. So make those transitions all musical. There's no reason for you to talk, right? You can sing through the musicals like every morning are Example of the hello song for this year. Drums in the bin now, drums in the bin now. Have a new song to sing, oh children. Drums in the bin now, drums in the bin now. Have a new song to sing. Let's make a circle, let's make a circle. Have a new song to sing, oh children. Let's make a circle, let's make a circle. Have a new song to sing, oh yeah. So you can just take those first that first short phrase and put in, you know, line up at the door now, um, you know, the shakers away now, whatever, you know. So use that song. Here is a picture of me with my little, little guys putting the drum away and we're singing, drum away, drum away. That is all for the drum today. Well, it's gonna take them a lot longer to sing with me and to participate at all if I'm doing all the singing, right? Where it's, it's always like, teachers, quit singing the song. You're delaying progress. <laughs> let stop and let them fill in the phrase, right? You can introduce it, but the quicker you stop singing, the, you know, the more they're going to learn it. So I sing drama and the children sing way drama way. That is all for the drum too. And you sing day, my favorite thing. Once I started doing this as a transition, I learned that when I went drama, they'd come in way drama way their pitch matching their ability to sing in tune as i transposed it a half step up each time amazing so that was just another way at like i said we don't do things the same from the beginning of the year to the end of the year we're raising that bar so i love this little song for that pitch matching and the accuracy when you have that repetition and something so simple like that, um, but it really, really does um, accelerate their success and their discriminant listening. In the Kids Make Music, Babies Make Music 2, this is my very first book. In fact, I noticed uh, that the, the old, um, the old graphic on this book is when I was with Warner Brothers in the day that Warner Brothers was very, very committed to um, music education. All of that was eventually um, moved over to Alfred Publishing. So in this book, the transition songs are, I mean, as helpful now as they were long, long ago. Um, some of our teachers joke this is this is like uh this is like the bible here this book is jam packed i had somebody say why would you put everything in the same book um you could have sold 10 books because it's so many different age levels and topics but it is jam packed like a hundred and some pages of of wonderful songs for instruments, solo singing, pitch matching, movement, but transition songs that are in there that I want to highlight. And certainly these um, Music Rhapsody members have these in your uh, curriculum, of course, and, and, and your recordings. The colors are gliding. So worth it. If you don't know it yet, um, I highly, highly recommend you can accompany it yourself on a metallophone and f-pentatonic so that's a great one um the transition songs on page 84 so from 84 to like i don't know 89 but we already used one example of let's make a circle with our hello song but let's make a circle a great big circle let's make a circle and away we go oh let's make a a great big and trying to get them the whole point is that they sing along with you or they start you cut out and they can sing the transitions themselves so that's one um another one that i really like because 
I don't use bags to drop my shaker eggs or my maracas because they have to go boom, boom, right? I use a, a basket and I sing gently back so they don't crack. Gently back so they don't crack. Gently back so they don't crack. We'll put them all away. And this was me going by with the basket and each child putting their, okay, that's why I was doing this. <laughs> Picture the children doing that. Um, gently back for tone blocks. They have such an amazing sound and my tone block that uh, is in my line of instruments with Remo, it's extra thick. We had it made extra thick. The grooves are amazing for snoring and frog croaking and whatever sound effects, you know, so many. Um, but if you would throw it in a big bag, you know, in the bottom of the bag, it, if it lands a certain way, it could crack and then they're dead. The sound, you know, you go into preschool sometimes and they have the one tone block that was in the box of one size fits all rhythm band box, you know, they break within the first, I used to say month, but then teachers started correcting me and they'd say, no, the first week. And then some others would say the first day, <laughs> barely bumps anything and it's cracked. So even the really top, top, top quality tone, Guerrero tone blocks, you say gently back so they don't crack and have each one put them gently back in the basket. It just, it, you know, what we're doing here is fostering respect and care for our instruments. Sticks up high while I come by. This works really great in my classes for little guys. Not so much at teacher workshops. I can't reach. <laughs> Sticks up high while I come by. Sticks up high while I come by. Sticks up high while I come by. I'll put them all away. Or while we come by and have a couple helpers and they just hold their sticks up here and we quickly, you know, um, take them. Um, we have the big bin going around, picking up like a train, um, and you can ask one of the kids to do the train, and um, drums away, drums away, that is all for the drums today, and they just are pushing a big plastic bin, and as they go by, you know, they're going to put their their drums back, so just really trying to keep that participation going for my upper elementary um and i'm saying upper maybe you know certainly my four or five six uh fourth fifth sixth graders respect r-e-s-p-e-c-t this is what it means to me respect yourself try your best respect miss lynn mm -hmm. respect our friends Oh, yeah. Respect all students. Here we go. Respect our mallets. Do not bend. Respect our instruments. Walk around. Whatever you want to put in there. Maybe you want the kids to comment there. Um, but respect. We have one rule. Respect. And that pretty much covers it all. And then also making it playful, you know, we already said earlier to walk around, but if, if I say, you know what, help your friends, we have some new people, they're not used to it, they think even a little glockenspiel they're going to walk over, but we want to help remind them, walk around, cha-cha-cha, walk around, cha-cha-cha, don't step over, mm -mm -mm. don't step over. Mm -mm -mm. Um, bottoms up, here is my bottom. Here's my bottom, okay, now the kids think it's funny already because I'm talking about my bottom. And here is my bottom up. Here's my bottom down, whoo, bottom up, whoo. That's posture. So depending, your rules might not be the exact as my rules depending on the type of instrument you have and their height. But for me, the alto tenor, I need to be up higher with, for the kids um, to not be clicking on the side of the instrument with the mallet. We only want the ball to play and we're trying to pull the tone out of the bar. So much <laughs> mileage out of that. Um, so much easier, playful, fun to go, ooh, 
bottoms up, and I just have to go, and they know, oh, posture, you know, much better than having to go, I need to have, you, we need to have you up, you're hitting it with the melts on the side of the bars, you know, just those kind of quick little things, leave the bars as they are, of course, they try to move bars, my signals, okay, this is um, something that certainly saves your voice, gives much more structure. For you new teachers, when the principal peeks in and sees you have total control by not even saying one single word, you're just using your signals. So I'm using my Sopranino. I have lots and lots of lessons, lots of training on this. I, If you don't play this yet, I, I wouldn't be without this tool. I take this everywhere I go, okay? This gives me musical power, <laughs> saves my voice. So uh, the Sopranino, the finger symbols, the TikTok block, I just keep them in a little pack. And this is in my, this is in my toolkit. That means to walk. That's where they go to a different row. The, of course, the echoes with the cowbell, uh, finger symbols, means to lay your mallets to rest. This means to free play. So, you know, this is a reminder to use them because most of you have been with me in online live training. But um, if any of you are new, highly recommend that you do the training on this area. It will, it'll save your voice so much, so much more uh, command to your group. Your rules of engagement, those are, again, page 13, where we have how the signals are introduced as a movement activity. And then it transfers over to our ORF instruments or to our percussion instruments. And then my last highlight here is just to hopefully inspire moving from exploration to improvisation because we're using this to give the children free play time. Just, you know, they need a time to just look at the instrument, be able to see where the center of that bar, the best place to hit. And with you playing this, they can do that. But often what you get is fast, loud, and huge skips. <laughs> You know, those beginning explorations are kind of, uh, yeah, and and there's not a lot of musicality there. And that's the beginning of the year. At the end of your year, it should not look like this, right? It should not sound like that. We're going to, throughout the year, move more towards a, a musical experience um, first of all, just like this pitch matching and the solo singing, you won't hear me say, oh, great, oh, that was spectacular, good. I'm describing, oh, we were the same, we, we matched, oh, you were a little higher, sing it again, I'll match you. It's, it's all descriptive words, you were lower, you were slower, you were higher, comparisons to others. So it's the same thing. With, if you see something, say something. If you hear something, say something. So once you start pointing out these little things to your students, I noticed you play really loud and fast and big skips, but someone, I saw someone who played a lot of neighbor notes and they just would go to the next one. Well, pretty soon they wanna all try that. Like, oh, let's all try it. Okay, we'll do steps. Or I heard a lot of repeats. Let's see if we can make up our song with a lot of repeats. When I say make up a song, as an ORF approach, we always have these B sections, C sections, where it's up to them and their creativity and their decisions. But for us to make them more, uh, move more from just wild, thoughtless chaos, exploration, to a more thoughtful, hmm, maybe I'll try this, or what did, maybe, maybe you can just do the long bars, the low notes, you know, maybe this song could be just the high notes, or maybe this could be in the middle, 
then it moves out. Give these suggestions and, and, and talk about steps, skips, repeats, dynamics, crescendos, those kinds of things you sprinkle through your whole year. So by the end of the year, much, much, much more musical improvisation. So we bring their attention to what's happening, describing what you hear. When I say to them, I heard three players who did lots of steps. I don't, I'm not sure if that was three players, right? But it's just bringing their attention to this other way of playing. Quiet beats, you guys, uh, make a song so interesting. Rest, when you have quiet beats. And I do have some pieces of music that I have enjoyed using that will have some examples and say listen to listen to the guy that wrote this song he's got a lot of quiet beats a lot of rests see if you can make up a song and put in some rests and then include opportunities for less students at the same time so they can hear themselves just like the solo singing Right? We do all those hundreds of little games in our curriculum so that each week they can hear themselves and focus on that. So if you, if you cut it down to just this time, it's just time for woods or time for metals or time for shakers or time for drummers, time for xylophones, then we'll you know, have less improvising and the others have to describe. The others can listen and then we can describe what did we hear, what did we see. All right. I would love, I haven't seen questions pop up, have you? No, not many questions. So you just uh, came to take some things in and maybe you'll email me later if you have a question. The other thing that's, that's in the mini workshop is when and how do I do chords? Just because I have seen some confusion with this where teachers are doing chord changes, but our hello song with the children is in C pentatonic. So no, 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 right? We never want to desensitize them to those chord changes. So there's a lot of examples there. And in our song this year, we're, we're going to just stick with C pentatonic and C accompaniment when the children are playing the ORF. If you want to put in lovely chords, then you do that when you do not have the children playing in the pentatonic. And our goodbye song this year, we're going to hear our symphony. Um, there, Like I said, the video has a wonderful ukulele lesson for you. It has the chords, suggestions for chords, and it has um, all the tips on how to introduce it. Oops, it just went away, so I didn't get that. It popped up in it. Okay, so nine and 10 year olds, definitely for that mini workshop and that goodie pack, um, there is ORF orchestration and recorder for older kids. But in, I would say the majority of my work, um, is from babies and pregnancy <laughs> and babies through, I'm going to say, you know, really, I was focusing with what I felt was the greatest need, the early childhood and those early primary years, TKK. And then the recorder approach, of course, um, I love to do in a much more playful stories and and ORF approach for that as well. So my my recorder approach is, is, is third, fourth grade, third, fourth grade. Then with my older grades, there is such a, an amazing foundation now, the, the ORF, it's, it's varied and I don't have the exact lesson plans for grades. Uh, four, five, six, except in our, all our schools that uh, are doing a recorder in fourth grade, then they do the recorder rookies. Yeah, I would say K, K4 or TK, pre-K through four, 
um, very, very, very fun approach um, to follow our curriculum for those age levels. Yeah. And we have a lot of schools that actually start preschool as well. So, you know, we've got plenty of lessons for that. Um, my buddies, my friends that I did ORF levels and, and master class, um, Randy and Jeff have game plan that's uh, has a middle school that we have we have used that for middle school. We've used it for our fifth graders. And my ensemble goes up through eighth, and I, I think our oldest is 15. And there's so much recorder and ensemble music out there. Um, you just can't run out of resources. If you have a recorder ensemble, I'd love to share with you. I've got just years and years of stuff I, I absolutely love. Okay, one more question just came in. Okay. Hundreds and hundreds of songs <laughs> to hopefully uh, get eager participation because it's usually not about them singing. You're not going. Okay, now take your turn, you know. Um, every single lesson has a little game a little opportunity. It it's it's just a little participation, and then the group. So something to polarize and and keep the group very engaged and musical, but solos. So um, if you went back to my very first book, and you look in the back at the index, it is crazy how when it describes what uh, what type of activity it is. I mean, and there's pages of these, <laughs> pages and pages. Um, solo singing, solo singing, you know, they're, they're, these are just all kinds of, of little games because we know the singing won't improve if we don't do little solos and bring the attention, develop the discriminant listening. So we know we have to do that as young as we possibly can. Okay. We actually start younger than you would think. Um, I have a old video and DVD, digital download now. <laughs> and a teacher said one time at an ORF conference, by the way, if you're going to the ORF conference, I'll see you there in November, AOSA. Woohoo! I will be there. I will be presenting, and I can't wait to see everybody live again. Um, but we... Um, Okay, now i am got so excited about the conference. <laughs> What's my question? <laughs> yes, so they said, we use Kids Make Music as our sub when we come to the ORF conference. And Kids Make Music in our studios, we use that with two and three-year-olds. Kids Make Music. But it's just jam-packed with goodies for TK, PK, kindergarten so you could use kids make music for kindergarten or tk or pk and you could use um the next level up big kids make music you could use that for again tk or k your next level up would be young musicians that's an orf uh there's there's some especially with the little glock and colored glockenspiel um, in the big kids, but then young musicians is or by the time we get to rhythm readers We're taking that beat and now we're changing it to rhythm melody makers includes a solfege Recorder rookies is there so we have schools where it's way different because I first see those children at age two So what I'm doing for each year is different than when I go to a school where I see them for the very first time in first grade. And that's when they start music, first grade. So I have to adjust. I can't say, well, what age for this? What age for that? Well, I kind of go more like this. And it's a, you know, it's just depends on what setting I'm in. But for our elementary, typically if we get them in, Kindergarten, we're doing recorder by fourth grade. Okay.
All right, so take that little ukulele lesson on your on your mini workshop video so you get really good playing the uh, goodbye song because we always introduce it with ukulele first. Really get to know that melody, get to know the words, and then we introduce the symphony. And this is so exciting because it's pianissimo. Shh, pianissimo. Okay, guys, this is a tricky part because we've had all this going on in our music class this whole time. Now, you have to really listen. I don't even know how the players can play this quietly, okay? So let's, let's listen. Here goes our goodbye song. If you know that from singing it with the ukulele, you can sing with us. It's time for us to go. Not too fast and not too slow. Now it's time for us to go. Music time is done. It's time for us to go, not too fast and not too slow. Now it's time for us to go. We had lots of fun. And he would weep if the symphony put you to sleep. Oh, Papa Haydn wrote this song. Sometimes we only sing just what you have there in front of you on that PowerPoint. There's a minor part, there's a forte part, and we introduce all that. Here comes the forte. All right, and here we go. Save the dates. Come to California. Come for vacation. So much to do here, and we are in Redondo Beach. Every single year I've been doing this for 30 some years. Um, we have it down to a little bit of online time, uh, a little bit of follow up consultation and time. Um, and so we jam pack it into three days. And so you can come uh, right here to Redondo Beach, California, June 28th to 30th. Anyone who's done the online training or live training comes for half tuition. Also, once again, for the second summer, I will be at SMU. Um, so those who need the college credit, you come on down to Dallas, Texas. It's at SMU July 20th to the 22nd. and. Just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am just, I'm always so appreciative that you give me this opportunity to share what I love and hopefully just give you a new idea or two and make you as excited about your school year as I am about mine. And um, just let me know if you have any questions at all. Coach Ann does consultations as well. If you if you just join membership, you might want a tour or some people feel like, am I, you know, getting my way around? I really don't know what you're talking about videos of every activity. I've never seen that. <laughs> we want to show you where that is because you should have access to all hundreds of recordings and videos of all activities and every single detailed lesson plan, lesson at a glance. So we wanna make sure you know where everything is so you can always schedule a tour with Coach Ann as well. Um, Lynn at Music Rhapsody, Ann at Music Rhapsody will get us, uh, get you to us or just info at Music Rhapsody would too. So any other, uh... oh good. We have some guests, and yes, I hope we see you again. Um, California people, I will be in Santa Barbara beginning of October. Um, I will be at the Southern California Vocal Association. I'll be presenting there October 21st. Um, Kansas City is AOSA, so I'll be there in November. And now you have the save the dates. We're gonna send you all the video, so. That way, if you want to go back and look at slides or any information, um, you'll have the video of this. Okay. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.